Hey guys, it's Kenny Omega here, and you are watching Ambi. Hey guys, it's Alicia too, and at this moment I am extremely excited because I'm hosting interview round three with the one and only Kenny Omega. Oh yeah. Welcome Third time back. around, yeah, let's make it a good one. I'm happy to be back. I again I told you I was I was surprised that when I looked at the, the run sheet that you're on it, and uh, again, a pleasant surprise. So Let's make it a good one. I'm down for that, absolutely. Yeah. I remember us saying next time you're through Toronto, we have to make something happen. Yeah. This counts. It counts. It totally no, counts. Absolutely, and the timing is, is just right because I'm here for the promotional um, tour for my, my documentary. Of course, we don't have to talk about that if you don't want to, <laughs> but uh, it, it's there if you want it. Omega Man, a wrestling love story. That's the one, yeah. How does it feel that it's finally out there? I mean, there were months and months of preparation going into this. Yeah, there was. Um, Geez, it, it's, it was like a year-long journey, and it's come to this point, and, you know, speed bump after speed bump, and trials and tribulations, et cetera, et cetera, but now it's finally out, and um, I believe we secured all the footage that we wanted and needed, and um, I get to see it, but people <laughs> that have seen it are telling me that it's pretty good, so um, the, the nerves are dissipating a little. I had butterflies. I was actually, I made a vow that I would never watch it. Really? I, yeah, because it's just embarrassing to me. I'm a shy boy. <laughs> Uh, but now I'm thinking if if the response is that positive and people are saying you should watch it maybe maybe I will like when I open you know I don't I don't know it's uh I'll watch it I just I'll get around to it for sure okay for sure. Mm -hmm. that's now on your list yeah at some point maybe I'll watch on the flight back I don't know um yeah so I'm excited does it feel pretty surreal to you to know that you've made that much of a statement in the wrestling world that people are like, all right, we're going to follow him around with tons of cameras for this amount of time? I mean, is that fairly surreal to you? Yeah. Um, you know, it was, it was, what was surreal about it was that, you know, we sort of had introduced a documentary style of filming in New Japan where, you know, camera crews would follow you and it would be like a day in the life of, you know, so-and-so. But it was for use for our streaming service. However, you know, this was a documentary to kind of tell the story of Tyson Smith, you know, otherwise known as Kenny Omega. And um, that is what made it strange because I had this group of people that I'd never met before. I wasn't sure if they were familiar with what I did or, or, or what my career was even all about. And I wasn't sure trusting... Mm, the, the compilation, the compiling of the footage to present their view of what I was. Yeah. But I was curious about it and I wanted to see how these people on the outside kind of viewed wrestling. What's their viewed perception? Me. Yeah, exactly. So I trusted them. Um, you know, they had a highly decorated background and, and you know, some award awards under their belt. And so I, I trusted them and I, I, I knew that they were going to take the utmost care in the, the telling of my story. And uh, again, I didn't even know what that story was going to be because it was just a camera crew following me, right? Um, but then, you know, when the trailer started to drop, it's, oh, it's about the Ibushi thing. And really, in the year 2018, with all of the big things that happened, um, that was probably the one story that was most near and dear to me. So I'm glad that they made that selection. Did you get used to those cameras following you around? Because this has been happening for quite some time now. Um, are you used to that aspect now that kind of just being in your life so much? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Dale, um, the, uh, the wonderful lady that has, has helped from day one in this film, e even when the camera crews aren't around, she finds a way to, to be heavily involved in my life, so <laughs> she, she, she is always around, and it's, it's like the camera crews are still with me even to this day, so I, I wonder, I, I, I worry that even after the film is, is debuted, that she'll, she'll, they'll still be around me somehow. <laughs> Maybe part two of the documentary, I don't know. Well, I remember being at All In when they were actually filming right, part of you it. Were there. Yeah, we yeah. did a little thing backstage, and the cameras yep. were there, and I'm like, "Whoa, we're filming! There's a camera, and then there's tons of cameras around yeah, us. Like, yeah. it's it's a different feeling. It's like you're you're it being is. watched, and yeah. you have to not necessarily monitor what you're doing, mm -hmm. but keep that in the back of your mind." See, that was always my worry: was that like, do do I feel? I, I was worried that even though I was so used to cameras being around me, you know, because they would do that a lot in in New Japan as well, mm -hmm. because they they like that, you know, the the moments before a match shot. You know, they see you warming up, see you, um, you know, hanging out backstage before walking through the curtain. And that's kind of like a real life um, view of what wrestlers go through before a big match. 
And they were doing the exact same thing, but in my mind, it was kind of messing with me because I felt like, oh, do I, do I have to look at the camera to perform <laughs> for these people? Um, it was a very different kind of feeling. Um, and I wasn't sure if it was because I was unfamiliar with the people around me and or if it was because there was a boom mic. I was like, it's this one foreign object that has never... <laughs> Just lingering around yeah, you yeah, constantly. And, and the guy was always there. and was always waving in my face. And so, uh, <laughs> So I remember at one point I was like, man, like you got to tell this boom mic guy to get out of here because I can't act natural. And that helped me ease into it. So did I he get out of there? Yeah, he did. Oh. He, was, he was happy. Yeah, he was, okay. he was very, very respectful of my wishes. <laughs> but I just needed to ease into it. It was too much too soon. You know what I mean? So the cameras and the people were cool. The boom mic was too much. Afterwards, the boom mic, you know, he, he was able to come back in. Um, so hopefully the audio and the documentary is okay. That being said. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was it was a little bit of a process, but I, I do believe I got more comfortable with it as we went along. Well, not too long ago, tons of fans were wondering, where is Kenny Omega going to end up? There were rumors mm -hmm. that you'd stay with the New Japan. He's going to sign with WWE. Is he maybe going to be a, a part of this rumored company that the Bucks and K Cody Rhodes are putting together? Right. And finally, AEW was announced, your signing was announced, and mm -hmm. people just went absolutely manic. Do you love sitting on big secrets like that? Oh man, <laughs> I, I do and I don't because okay. I, I love I love being transparent with people and I like being openly honest and it, it pains me when, for example, you know, when I'm signed under an NDA or if there's like a contractual thing that disallows me to speak openly about something, I just I just like being honest and it's hard for me to lie, especially too, where it's like, what are you doing? And if I kind of know, I, I do want to say that I kind of know. But if there's something in place which, which stops me from saying what I'm doing, it's so hard to tell people I can't tell you <laughs> because I want to. Yeah. And I'm excited about, you know, this is, this is, I wasn't forced into any decision. I was, is, it was a decision I made on my own. You know, I'm, I'm an adult, make my own decisions. And I'm proud of those decisions. So when I knew where I was going to sign, I wanted to announce it immediately. But of course, you know, there's always a plan with those guys. Right, always a plan. <laughs> and it was, it was cooler, I guess, to walk out of the press conference anyway. Um, but I, I did want to tell everyone. And I guess, you know what? Truth be told, even though I made the decision to sign, it probably was proper to do it at the press conference because I had actually signed like the real contract just moments before walking out. Really? Yeah. So sometimes maybe it is, it is smart to, to not say anything until there's pen to paper, right? So it was almost like the celebration, right? Moments mm. after. I had right. no idea about that. That's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, that that's how it went down. It was like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with you guys, and like, okay, we'll have the paperwork ready for you. And we went to, uh, you know, it was a it was a party outside the hotel, mm -hmm. around the poolside area. So um, I was in one of the uh, like the rooms, and it was like sign the paper, then pop on my suit jacket, go on walk out. down, yeah, and then um, I remember I kind of joined during I think Matt was just getting pile driven on the stage as I like came down and uh, yeah I went on shortly thereafter so it was it was pretty pretty much one thing after another they, there was there was next to no time so yeah um, just to keep things prim and proper and official that maybe that was the best way to go about it well, that was such a big announcement, but AEW also announced a new announcement, which is that you guys are teaming up with CEO Gaming, yes. which is right up your alley. Yeah, so with course. how busy you've been, have you still been able to keep up with that gaming aspect oh, of your life? Is uh, it hard? Yeah, I mean, like, I try to give all my free time towards, you know, my, my hobbies and my, my other passions in life. So, you know, esports and, uh, you know, just gaming in general is, is what, I, what I tend to, to go to. Um, you know, I, I do game as a pastime, as a hobby, but I also am heavily involved in the esports community as well. You know, I do exhibition gaming. I have an esports sponsor. I'm working with ESPN as well to do um, features on some of their athletes, and I do commentary as well. So, I mean, moving forward, I'll be doing more work with ESPN. I'll be trying to uh, feature more of their athletes so that they can, you know, get their share of the spotlight and be more well known in the, in the world of esports gaming. And I'm really going to kind of push for esports to kind of be accepted among, you know, all other sports in the world. So that's a, that's a kind of a sub venture of mine, but one that I'm heavily prioritizing just as much as my wrestling. So 
something I do find interesting in wrestling, and a lot of fans sometimes know it, sometimes they don't see it as much, is that so many wrestlers are really into gaming. They are. And some yeah. of them are super so outspoken about it, and some aren't. In your case, you are. Yeah. Um, but is there anybody that you feel is kind of on your level? Or are there any wrestlers that you do <sighs> game with? No one, no one, oh, no one's Wow, on that was like a, right away. No, because, because I, you know, I, I, I give people the ball, you know, I give people the opportunity to try <laughs> to step up to the plate and no one's come close. The one person, and I'll give him credit because he's got courage, is, is uh, Austin Creed, Xavier okay. Woods. Yeah. You know, he, he's, he's got a competitive spirit, a competitive nature. You two are intense. I've watched you actually I mean, live stream. He, and he doesn't, he doesn't know when <laughs> to say quit. He, he tries, you know, and I'll give him credit for trying. <laughs> He's got a lot of pride, but I mean, that's his own downfall, right? He's going to keep getting embarrassed over and over and over again. But, um, you know, I, I'm really into, uh, just got into battle royale shooters lately. So, uh, for wrestlers, man, you know what? I sometimes squat up with Sammy Callahan. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, I didn't know he was a battle royale guy, but he loves them. We started talking about shooters uh, around like the blackout, Call of Duty blackout days. He's like, yeah, we should we should squat up sometimes. He's like, yeah. And then Apex came out. and So, uh, yeah, we... we kind of hang out and, and play games every now and then. And it's kind of cool, like, just to, you know, we'll, we'll make the small talk, you know, the wrestling small talk, how are things going, how's your body holding up and stuff like that. But it's... It's, it's all just, about the gaming. It's about the gaming, yeah. getting the W, <laughs> exactly. So it's a fun time. And uh, it's, uh, it really helps stay connected to guys that you wouldn't otherwise be able to. Um, you know, we, especially now, um, you know, there's so many promotions where you can make a living and it takes so much of your time so you know whether you're in japan or AEW or impact or or wwe you have a full workload there um but in that that little bit of downtime in whatever city you're in you know you're just one internet connection away from <laughs> from linking up with someone yeah. that, that that you like and that you know and catching up like i do a lot of my business meetings um, or business phone calls i don't know what you call conference calls even I do it on Apex. I'll be like, you want to talk about business? Hey, let's squat up an Apex. <laughs> so we'll talk about it as we're playing. Seriously? Yeah, so, wow. I gotta, so I can knock out two birds with one stone. I'm just too addicted to the game. So it's like, it's either I play Apex or we don't have this conference call. It makes so the conference calls yeah, more yeah. bearable, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, still, I'm still being responsible as an executive vice president. Um, and... and I'm just lucky that the people I do have to talk to are into gaming as well, so mm -hmm. it helps. Makes it easier. Mm -hmm. Well, I love how whenever our paths cross, we always end up talking about the nerdier stuff like gaming, superheroes, comic books. Right. And the last time I saw you, we actually ended up going with some of the crew, and Shane Helms was there, uh, to a diner right. after yeah, yeah, yeah. a show. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was awesome, because you guys really got into talking comic books. I love them. But I didn't get to ask you, the ultimate superhero to you, who is it? The ultimate superhero. Oh... It's tricky. It is tricky, you know, because uh, like the answer is so boring because it's always like if you could pick any superhero to be, you know, to assume their powers, who would you pick? And it's like, I know people hate it because it's, it's like the boring answer, but like you would just want to be Superman. You did think I'd love to say I'd love to be Batman, but this, what would I, I'd love to be a master of martial arts and be, yeah rich and clever technically though there's no so. real superpowers yeah, when it comes like, to him, i guess right? i would like that says, but if i could pick anybody you know i'd rather be the man of steel um and there's such a huge like v like large variety of superheroes to choose from not only just like in both the major universes of dc and marvel but just you know image comics you know like graphic novels like you could pick anybody but still it always comes back down to like <laughs> superman, marvel and dc <laughs> right marvel and dc and like specifically superman for me because it's like you can fly, you're super fast, impenetrable, um, you can breathe in space, you know what I mean? I, laser vision, you know, frost breath. It's like, what, I guess I'd probably get some of his good looks, I guess. I don't know, you know what I mean? You'd hope it would transfer over? Yeah, Maybe I hope, it's part I of the hope deal. so, yeah, that, that'd be my hope anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, like it would just, it would have to be Superman. I'm sorry that's the boring answer, but, and I swear, I, I swear to God I know more about comics and just that but he's proven it he definitely does yeah yeah but in terms of what power i would want to have you know you know what power is is actually cool though and i i sort of thought that the idea of uh you know having nightcrawler's power would be cool too mm -hmm. just like in terms of 
having it be applicable in your everyday life would be so cool. But then I'd have to be like a bad, I'd be like a, a thief, like a jewel thief or something. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's the humor right there. I like how your mind yeah. goes to that rather than like, it's easier for travel, just kind of showing up, popping up. It's like, no, yeah, jewelry yeah. thief, that's where it's at. Well, I mean, because you could just teleport, you know what I mean? It's like whatever you, you picture, you can teleport. Yeah. And just, yeah, it's a it's a cool power. And I don't know, I, I sort of picture like, you know, the days when, when Wolverine would, would prize fight. And it's like, if you, even if, if powers were legal and you had to cage fight against someone, you know, having the Nightcrawler ability would be pretty, pretty OP in a way. Just to be able to teleport wherever you see and just can't touch what you can't see, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I mean, that goes with so many guys. Like you know, Green Green Lantern's got a cool. I like I like his gimmick. Do you know the oath? Oh man. I I think I, it starts off like in in darkest day and brightest. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. No Something evil shall some... escape my sight. I used to know yeah. it by heart when I was little. Oh man. That's gonna bug you now until yeah. we'll have to look it up afterwards and see. <laughs> see the thing is I never collected the comics, but I'm such a huge um, Justice League Infinity and Justice League like animation fan. Mm -hmm. So they would recite that all the time in those as well. And you know, I did watch the um, Ryan Reynolds movie as well, and he said it there too. Uh, it was Ryan Reynolds, right? Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Man, but I do like the I like the idea that it's the power the power is only restricted to your imagination. Yeah, and I would like to think that I was an imaginative person, and I always thought like when I watched the movies like you're not using half the ability of your of your ring power because a lot of the stuff that you create that you forge in your mind sort of sucks, <laughs> and that was always my gripe with like when you that like, let you down. Yeah, with the movie, not only that, but then um, this isn't really comic book related. I guess it could be. I'm sure he has a comic, but. The, the reboot of Nightmare on Elm Street, you know what I mean? Like, Freddy's dreams were so boring. It was always just the boiler room. When, you know, back in the day, and my favorite one, the third one, Dream Masters, it was just like, it was so good because every, every dream was like a scene and it was something based loosely in reality or More something- More creative yeah, too. Yeah, it was just wild. I think they need to go back to that. But anyway, kind of went off topic. It's fun. That's yeah. the best part of these interviews. Okay. They can go wherever yeah. they want to go. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just wrap things up. I do want to leave it sure. with your awesome fan base. Is there yeah. anything that you want to say? Anything you want to talk about that's coming up? Just what do you want to leave? Okay, so we've got a documentary coming up. <laughs> airs tonight. I'm not sure when this is going to go up, but this is the 27th, and it airs tonight um, for our Canadian fans. And um, I know that there are other fans in other areas of the world, and we are working diligently to make this available for you guys too. Um, aside from that, uh, you will probably be able to see me somewhere. I may be making some special appearances, but I will definitely be appearing at Double or Nothing, and that's at MGM, MGM Grand. And um, fixing to be a big event, the main event is of course myself and Chris Jericho, and uh, there are plenty of other very exciting matches. and. Um, there are going to be more announcements featuring um, new talent that I've yet to announce, and I'm very excited to announce. So uh, it's exciting times because, um, you know, we've got my match, which is great, but for me, what's exciting about the future is um, giving the spotlight and the stage to, you know, this new influx of talent, this new wave of talent that I've yet to debut. So uh, I'm very excited for that, and I hope you guys will be too. So that's all coming up very soon. Exciting times. Yes. I want to say thank you so much for joining me once again. Anytime. I'm, I, you said at the beginning, hopefully this is better than the last. We're getting better every time, we're I feel. Every I feel like time. We're getting yeah, stronger. We're baby we really steps are. Every time, yeah. <laughs> this will be a full time gig eventually, I think. One people, day. Yeah, people are going to sign us. We'll be like the new Beavis and Butthead or something. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say thank you so much right. for joining thank me. It's always much. such a pleasure. And to everybody viewing, be sure to tune in to alicia2.com for all exclusive interviews and features. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Good night.